story based on my experience in the University of Ibadan. It was called Nene and Other Stories. It was supposed to be a long novel, but it took me so long to write. At the beginning of the story, the, the biro cost uh, 15 kobo. At the end of the story, the biro was costing 30 naira or something. So I couldn't get all that, you know, the economics was wrong. So what we did was, what I did was divided each story, each chapter into a, into a, a, a short story. So that's Nene. And that also covers a lot of areas of the difficulties of being an adolescent or being a, a young adult in the university setting. Uh, strikes, riots, etc., etc. So it's, and it's based, as I said, mainly in UI and the Polytechnic. Uh, then I, I, I wrote a story about the history of the University of Ibadan as a play called Why UI. And I've written several little stories which uh, have been picked up in ver by various anthologies. And most recently, uh, I've done a collection of short stories on poetry, which was called um, Hope's Wristwatch. And uh, that's a story about a young girl who has uh, no hands, but encourages somebody else who has no legs as a result of some um, war damage. And um, it's an encouragement. Basically, I feel that the, the, um, those who have physical challenges are very, very neglected in our society. So it was a way of sort of giving some, some uh, exposure to them. But my, most, my latest work is, is a, a collection of poetry. It's not a collection, actually, it's a long poem. And it's about Africa and the struggle of the people to survive the bad politics and the bad governance and the bad support systems that are there. And we have an amazing resilience in, 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 in our continent, I believe. But it is, it is, it is being um, abused by governments that often thinks that they can ride roughshod over you. So you hear all the heads of state have billions of dollars abroad and the people have no water. They have no books in school. They call it a school and yet it doesn't have a library. And yet you want this same child to become a doctor, a lawyer, whatever. This uh, poem is about how Africa is, thread is, is kept together by uh, the structure called the laterite road. Everywhere you go, you see a road leading to a village or leading back from a village. If you fly over Africa, even through the deepest forest, you will see a red road going this way or that way. And we say that that is the string that is binding Africa together. And that is the basis of the laterite road, but deals with a lot of things. Book TV, Liberty in the Future. I'd like to read a poem from Tony Marino's Laterite Road. On the Laterite Road, mothers die in daring endless labor. Babies die in deadly delivery. Youth die in child labor. The hunchbacked workers die in hard labor. Africans age die pensionless in pension kills. We are stolen pension quelling officialities. African people die in court holes on the lateral I'm going to read an excerpt from Woloshenka's work, The Man Died. I read from chapter 2. My arrest and my framing were two entirely different affairs. The one was prompted by the following activities. My denunciation of the war in Nigerian papers. My visit to the East. My attempt to recruit the country's intellectuals within and outside the country for a pressure group which would work for a total ban on the supply of arms to all parts of Nigeria, creating a third force which would utilize the ensuing military stalemate to repudiate and end both the secession of Biafra and the genocide consolidated dictatorship of the army which made both secession and war inevitable. I was framed for my activities in Goa. I was framed and nearly successfully liquidated because of my activities inside prison. From Kirikiri, I wrote and smuggled out a letter setting out the latest proof of the genocidal policies of the government of Gowon. It was betrayed to the guilty men. They sought to compound their treason by a murderous conspiracy. Books build brains. Buy a book for your children every holiday 
every Christmas and every birthday. Book TV, liberating the future. Different things influence different writers. In our level, I used to go out at night to watch the moon. That was when I started writing my poems. Later, I moved to the writing of themes like love, life, and many other things. I read, then when I read, I write. Because I believe that writers are readers, and readers are writers. Yeah, I used to write love poems, especially for the ladies who I meet, my friends generally. Talking about my female friends, I used to write poems for them. And I used to go to literary readings. There I meet with different writers and we share, you know, we share things in common and we discuss about literature in general. Book TV, liberating the future. Our main goal is to teach French, of course, uh, that we have a center of documentation with a big library and uh, we try to promote uh, culture and of course uh, we try to encourage all our public to to read you know you know that the problem of reading books is a, a big problem now the new generation don't read as much as the former generation this problem is not only happening in Nigeria is the the same all over the world. So, what, as a cultural center, what do we do to try to promote literature and to try to promote, uh, to push the, the, the new generation to read? First, among our cultural activities, we have book readings. We invite writers uh, here and they and we invite, of course, the public, and so they can talk uh, and interact with their public. I think it's a good way for a, a writer to speak of his creativity, and uh, maybe after uh, a book reading, we know that after a book reading, anyway, the public buys book, buy book, and then maybe they will read more. After school, actually, before I went for service, I did a little, a little thing with a, a public, I mean, a, a newspaper house in, in Akure. Then I went on news. I don't know whether I'm still assisting now, you know. So I, I, I do the, I mean, I, I was a freelance cartoonist for them. Then I do some of their cartoons, then I do a, a cartoon strips for them every week. In this part of the world, we, we, we keep talents. You know, find that a lot of time artists doesn't have any encouragement from anybody. Even your family doesn't understand you. You are like a mad person. Your ideas, it's like, it's like you are the only one seeing what you are thinking of. You know, it's not so visible, it's abstract. It's like people don't understand what you are seeing ahead of you. In terms of look lucrative, being lucrative, well, it's not that lucrative for now. And, and that depends on what you are. I'm talking about what I'm doing now. I'm working on comics, on graphic novels. But in few few months to come, it will be. You know, it's a passion. It takes pain. It takes waiting. And waiting is painful, I tell you sincerely. So if you are not a good waiter, I, I tell you you will run out of the you, you won't be in the yard business. Our reading culture is still very poor. And the reason being that people want something that is more readers readers friendly. You know, people even the you know, thank adult readers. They want something that is more reader friendly. That's why in, in the US, we have graphic novels that are done for adults. You know, more mature stories, concise stories, with pictures, painting, I mean, different styles, different genres. You know, that, that, that will interest even the adults. So I would say is the way we put it. If we make the books reader friendly, more reader friendly, for, for the children with more pictures, quality pictures, good illustrations, I think they want to read. My name is Tadej Padiola. 
writer, poet, lawyer, multiple prize winning writer. Please watch Book TV. Book TV. Liberty in the future. On the number five is First Veritas Educational Content Delivery Limited. Established by the immediate former managing director of Evans Publishers Limited, Ben Rowe at Degbola. First Veritas Educational Content Delivery is an organization whose focus is strongly bent towards the provision of high quality and cost effective educational services and solutions through innovation to students and other stakeholders in the educational industry. First Veritas as a firm stands for two things, innovation and top quality publishing. We believe in the years to come, First Veritas will bank on their publishing platform to sell our running comatos, cultural identity. Welcome on board First Veritas. And number four on our top five list is Evans Publishers Limited. Evans' top quality, educative and affordable books has not only attracted us, but it has ensured its placement on our prestigious top five. Evans Brothers Nigeria Publishers Limited has continued to thrive in the development of high quality educational and curriculum based books, as well as leisure books. The company has a subsidiary company called Nelson Publishers which it acquired in 2004. Evans Publishers initiated the Inspire campaign in 2004. This campaign is a platform adopted to positively impact and add value to all Evans stakeholders, namely students, teachers, booksellers, parents, 